Hello, it's Damien. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, the conversation that I would love to have with you is one regarding the video I posted entitled Confessions of a Paid Remote Viewer, Leak Project. Now, in that video, and I'll put a link in the description below, uh, you will find a lot of great comments and, uh, and great questions from people. And I, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to come on here and uh, just to kind of generally answer some of those questions. And, uh, and of course, I'm gonna, not gonna, I don't want to violate anybody's privacy, so I'm not going to be you know, m mentioning your names or anything because you know, I don't have your permission to do so. But, but I, I would like to at least you know, discuss you know, some of the basics regarding that. Uh, because uh, in that leak project interview, there was there was a lot of unanswered questions, and so first of all, uh, the the big question really is is uh, what is remote viewing, and is it real? It, uh, you know, people are skeptical. So let's let's kind of go into that a little bit. Uh, let's first define it. To me, remote viewing is uh, is really a, a system to organize all of your sensory faculties. And, and, and how, how that works is that your, 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 your senses, like, you know, taste and, and uh, sound and, uh, and smell, you know, and, and sight, right? Uh, in remote viewing, you know, they call it remote viewing for a reason. You can see things. Uh, for me, I'm a type of remote viewer who, um, when I see things, it's more like seeing in, um, like if I were to close my eyes, and I would see the, um, you know, if I, if, I, if I stared at something long enough, like a bottle of water, and then I close my eyes. Then I would, uh, then I could reconstruct that that visual, you know, visualization, and then, and then I can see detail and hold that as long as I can. In fact, uh, one of the videos I posted regarding meditation, I talk about how focus is a, is a key component to learning how to remote view, and meditation is a way to teach focus. But uh, not to get too far afield, and I'm sorry if I I don't want to bore anybody out there, so I'll try to be as concise as I can. Um, but but remote viewing is basically a system to organize your your sensor your your sensory faculties. Now, why do you do this? Uh, you do this because um, at least why it was originally designed, especially with the military, is to improve uh, the soldier. Uh, to Im improve, if you were able to organize the you know your sensory input into a way where you can retrieve it with, with accuracy and speed because you have basically designed a filing system for your experiences and your perspectives in life. And as a soldier, you know, lives are on the line, including your own. And this was designed to, remote viewing was designed to allow you to organize information in such a way and in and, and a specific way. So that way through repetition that you would be able to, um, Find that that answer to whatever problem that you're faced with at that particular moment because you have to be very quick and very fast when you're in the field. And so, and then if you if you were able to file that information a certain way, you were able to retrieve and extract that information. And the the better you were at your at your filing system, like remote viewing, the easier it would be for you to retrieve the the correct answer. So so in the end, it was about um, structuring. Uh, the soldier to be a be basically be all you can be to be the best fighter that you know you could be. So uh, so remote viewing was that technique, that skill that was trained into people. And and um, anyway, so so that so remote since remote viewing is basically a uh, an organizational process, a, a strict organizational process that kind of answers skepticism for people out there. Like what you know how, can, is it real? Can you use it? Now, where, where it becomes in the magical realm and not necessarily the practical realm is when you start using remote viewing for future forecasting. And this is where people start getting really, you know, uh, you know, hey, this doesn't seem real to me. And, um, and I like to kind of, I kind of like to address that in a, in a, you know, more, you know, understandable way if possible. Um, in remote viewing, it, it was like I said. It was designed to increase speed and accuracy, and really to to allow you to understand your fortitude and your gut. Uh, you know, it allowed you to uh, have you know uh, hopefully your intelligence in your mind and your memory in your heart. And if you had these these systems to where they were working independently, but yet uh, but yet collectively in harmony, then um, then when they work together. 
you can derive answers immediately. So at least that was the theory. So, um, so, so with with remote viewing, the structure became the the most important aspect to it, to uh, to make sure that everything was put in its proper place. Because once they found out that they were um, putting people into, you know, when, once they found out that the information was going into correct areas and it was almost like spontaneous after a while because, you know, through repetition, we all, you know, all, all, every way through repetition, it becomes second nature to us and we don't have to think about it anymore. All of a sudden they started noticing that there were different modes to how we interact with the data that we're, we're collecting. And, and those modes have uh, basically an anchor in time. And, and again, this is where the future forecasting remote viewing comes in, and that's why I wanted to kind of bring that up as well, um, you know, on the magical side of, of remote viewing, is with, with these modes, they discovered that we, our bodies are actually uh, receivers and transmitters. I mean, no surprise there. I mean, we know this, but, but the, you know, scientifically, this is, this is the big hurdle we have to get, get through, right? Scientifically, they have to make sure of this. So remote viewing started changing its, its you know, it, its purpose because it discovered that through these different modes in our bodies we can access um, access different time and and how how I use remote viewing is I do use my body as uh, you know you can use it to move in and out of time so to speak and how I what I mean by that is this in so the modes that we have there are there are they're primarily on within certain uh, in certain positions throughout our life. Now, these things can change, but generally how, here's how it works for me when I do my remote viewing, and I'd like to share it with you. And I'm sorry this is gonna be long, but I think the long explanation may may help a little bit. In your mind, your mind has, its mode is generally in the past. So I remember when. I know if I touch that stove, it's gonna burn me. You know, these things, it generally exists in the past. Our hearts um, in, the, in the center, are generally exist in the present moment and then our hands come out of our bodies in the heart area because everything happens with our jazz hands in the in the now so uh, so this is this is how you make and manifest and create things this is the gifts that we were given um, also in remote viewing not I don't want to get too far in the minutia as well with it but in remote viewing how I use it as well is I my right hand path is my um, electric and my left hand path is my uh, my magnetic and and so so my so when I feel drawn into something that I feel the left I, I let my left hand path so to my left hand sort of guide me um, and if I am looking at a focus or intention or something very specific um, I will allow my um, you know the electric aspect of you know its its purpose then I'll, I'll let my right hand guide me as well. So I, I try to use my body as a um, as a measurement and as a, as development as well. Uh, so anyway, so most remote viewers are actually uh, mental remote viewers and and me I'm not I'm not really that type of remote viewer. Um, I, I'm a I'm a body I'm a body remote viewer and I use I use elemental uh, remote viewing as well. That's a, a little bit different. It's kind of my it's kind of like a hybrid um, type of remote viewing. Uh, and the reason why I, I do that over the mental remote viewing, like you hear most often with the future forecasting uh, side, is um, for me, I like to separate things as much as I can because that helps me get higher definition and detail. And that's what you're doing in remote viewing is you're trying to extract more, higher definition and higher detail regarding the object thing idea that you're you're trying to observe. And again, uh, regarding the past, present, and future aspects to this, um, so... The, the the mind is the uh, generally the future aspect the heart is the present and then you have the gut and the gut is really where um, where you uh, where I find future events where I look into future events is through the gut because the gut is where my intuition is the gut is where my emotions and my feelings are and 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 what happens is is that if I don't if I can't emotionally anchor to the future event then I don't consider it to be real for me so that this is how I this is how I try to st this is how I personally stay away from targets that are um, not true, is because I won't get information uh, that you know I won't get accurate information because I can't emotionally attach myself to the target, which mean which means to me because the way I am I have entuned my body, which means to me then then I don't um, then there's nothing there for me to 
experience and have a perspective on. Because um, also, in regard to remote viewing too, is that every single target that you look at, every one, you are observing and you are absorbing. And you leave something with the target just as much as you take something from the target. So you take knowledge or information, whatever it is you're looking for, but you gotta remember, you are leaving a part of you with it as well. So now you have a relationship through time, regardless it's past, present, or future, no matter what, you have a relationship with that. So um, one of the great questions I got again was, you know, why did you quit? Well, I, I didn't really quit, I just changed the direction in which I was going regarding remote viewing because I knew that every target that I'm looking at, I am becoming a part of that target. And, 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 I, and so you wanna choose wisely. You wanna, you wanna make sure that you, you know, when you're looking at a target, do, do so, you know, do so with humility and do so with, with care. Uh, and again, that comes from the gut, is the care comes from the gut. And that's the, you know, that's the one thing that was hardest for me to learn in remote viewing is because uh, care is a, is, a, is a concept that is not, uh, really taught anybody, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of have to find that on your own. So, um, so that was, that was probably my biggest stumbling block. This is why I talk so much about the gut and, and so much about, you know, that, that aspect intuition and stuff and future forecasting. Um, because I'm not necessarily, I, I mean, I do future forecasting obviously, but the way I would explain it, and I'm, again, I'm sorry for the long explanation, but you know, I'm trying to give you as much information as I can to help you on your journey. And so you can find the answers to the questions that you have. But the uh, way I would explain how future forecasting works and why I think sometimes they give remote viewing a bad rap and I would never talk ill upon anybody who does remote viewing. It's, I think it's a valuable, valuable skill in life. But, um, but it's, I, I, I treat it like it's like a fire hose. Uh, if you are looking at you know three, six weeks in the future, a day in the future, whatever, you're holding on to a fully functioning, fully blowing fire hose right at the nozzle, so you can pretty much control it okay. You know, you can you, you, you can kind of see where things are gonna go, you can see the trends, you can see the motion and the action, you know, and what, what's going on. So it's easy to kind of pick up on, you know, what's gonna take place based on the, the things that are or the pieces that are already on the field and, and moving and, and, and reacting as long as you are aware of of um, you know your surroundings. So uh, so but then if you want to look further into the future, you have to move back further on the hose and then the the further you go back on the hose, the further in time you're looking in the future and that hose when you go further in the future in the future that hose gets you know real real un you know it's it's blown all over the place. You can't really control it because you got too much hose in there and there's so much that could take place that will change the future because that's one of the big what's one of the big conundrums in remote viewing that a lot of people don't like to talk about but I have looked at time pretty heavily and uh, and you know there is we participate in something we are participating in something here and that participation has cause and effect and that's another great question that actually came up is um, is you you absolutely every single person the Akashic record cause and effect the Akashic record is like, think of it like the field where if you drop or a field, but it's, it's in the ethereal realm and not necessarily in the physical realm. When you drop a pebble into a pond, ripples uh, will go out. When you drop, when you, as you, as a, as a, uh, as a person who, who is moving and has action and touches things and moves things and talks to people and do, and participates in society, there's actually uh, in the ethereal realm, if you will, and you know that you can pick up on this, or the Akashic record, as they call it. They send ripple. It sends ripples out, and all of this, this action, this, these waves are all interacting with each other. And what you do, how you access the Akashic record, is you, you literally have, you have to have such focus. Again, meditation, and it will help you with that. Where you can follow the ripples like a chain of events. You can follow the ripples until you find that unique frequency that you're looking for. And you can do, you can do this quickly because um, what's crazy is, is we can process information very, very quickly. Our minds can. We can file these things very, very easily. So you can lose 99% of, of all the minutia out there when you look into the Akashic record and find that 1% that's similar very simply because all you're doing is you're saying, okay, I don't need these frequencies, I don't need those frequencies, which leads me to another uh, question where, yes, this, this system is based on frequency to a, a very large degree. And, um, and I would point you in the direction of the Sophagio frequencies. 
um, and I would point you into the direction of, of uh, cymatics. And, and these also play a role in, in how to tune to the right frequency when in your remote viewing uh, sessions, how to pick up the right data and pick up the right information. Now I know I'm giving you guys a lot of a lot of information here and a lot of data. I don't want to I don't want to like beat you over the head with it, but I would like to address one more thing, and that is regarding uh, imagination. And another great question: How do you tell the difference between your what your remote viewing and what imagination is? And and for me, um, I'll share that with you, and then you guys you know can work with it in your practice if you want. But um, what, when, when I'm doing my remote viewing uh, sessions, and, and usually they take you know about two hours if you do it correctly, and it's very intensive. But usually when I'm doing my remote viewing sessions, um, if I get what they call an analytical overlay or imagination starts creeping in, what happens is, is my definition decreases substantially, and when and it becomes very fuzzy. If it becomes very fuzzy, I know more than likely for me, as as the way I've trained myself, m probably one or two things are going on. One thing that could be going on is my imagination is taking over because there may be information in the target that I have no conceptual way to describe it. I have no way to define what I'm looking at. It's something unique that I've never seen before. I've never experienced before. So. My imagination, in order to keep things congruent and to keep me sane, I have to, um, I see this fuzzy, this fuzzy information start coming in, and of course I'm a curious person, so what do I do? I immediately want to want to look at it, I immediately want to pick it apart, you know, I want to see what it is, and, uh, and then uh, by, you know, by doing that, I can find out, is it my imagination filling in the blanks, because that's what it's used for for me, imagination is a great tool. Or is it me not being interested in the target that I'm looking at and I'm now creating something that is more akin to something that I would be interested in so I'm actually uh, inv and I'm actually moving my uh, abilities into a different target which is how you get a miss in remote viewing. So, um, or you have a target that your threshold of detection is so low on that you just can't pick it up because you're not, um, you know, you can't pick up on something. You can't pick up on a set of car keys, you know, as opposed to you can pick up on, you know, the pyramids of Giza. You know, there's a lot of emotional content in the pyramids of Giza that you can anchor yourself into. So therefore, but there's not necessarily a, a lot of emotional content in the set of car keys that belong to somebody you've never met before. So the chances of you picking up on the set of car keys that you've somebody you've never met before are very low and very slim because, yeah, you are participating in the local and the aggregate systems, but there's no real emotional you know, connection there that you would even consider yourself involved in uh, nor normally. So, and, uh, and so anyway, so that hopefully kind of answers the uh, Akashic record, uh, the skepticism and imagination. Also to finish off on that is, um, is yeah, and when you're in the beginning of remote viewing, your imagination is gonna run wild on you. It's okay, it's healthy, let it, let it go, let it, let it do its thing, let it, let it find its way. And then eventually what you'll do is once you get better at it, you'll have really high definition, high detail. You'll be able to smell the target. You'll be able to sense the target. You know, you'll be able to touch the target. You know, you'll be able to do these kind of things. And then when your imagination comes in, you know, you can use that to, um, to basically improve how you, um, how, your remote viewing skills. Um, you know, if you, can make your, if you can make that information that's coming in, that, that's, uh, that new information coming in, then that you have no conceptual concept of, well, that's how you gain experience and perspective and that's how you become a better remote viewer and how you increase and sharpen your skills and your talents. So never, never, ever be uh, scared of any, you know, AOLs, anal analytical overlays, or any imagination uh, intrusions. Uh, simply use it as a tool to, um, to make, to, to focus your energy back into a more uh, defined, area that you you know that you know you were locked on and then allow that imagination to kind of creep in just a little bit just to pepper it a little bit so that way you know you're trying to learn a little bit as well so um, anyway I hope all that oh hope all that helps uh, those are some of the main questions um, I did want to break down one last thing for you and then I'll, I'll won't bore you anymore with this but uh, the last thing is um, for me, I'm since I'm an elemental remote viewer. I'm not a I'm not a future forecaster like you know most mental remote viewers are out there that you see. I'm an elemental body remote viewer. Um, I I have uh, categorized my faculties in such a way for retrieval and accuracy and detail uh, by um, basically having um, the four elements work within my body. So my mind is air. 
And that is where I extract in, uh, the intelligence and the reason, um, the reasons behind the, uh, the target. I use my heart to uh, define the desire and the will, like what, what is its purpose, what is, it, what is its function. I, I will um, use my heart as the element, and that's, that's fire. So uh, that's, I, I categorize these things that way uh, for my filing system, remote viewing filing system. And then I use my gut, which is water, and I will use that for my feelings and my emotions, and that is where I find, uh, and that's where I, I connect through care. Uh, what, are the, what is it that I care about? This is what's so cool about remote viewing. Every single remote viewer, and this is another great question that came up in the, in the thing. Every single remote viewer is unique and, and they are an individual all into themselves and they see and they sense in their own way. And, and that makes it such a, a valuable tool and skill. And I think this is why the military wanted a lot of people to learn about it too because they discovered this and they they think of it like this, think of a dark room, you throw one candle into that dark room, in other words, one remote viewer into that dark room, and you're gonna see a little bit. They'll see just a, just a little bit. But if you have 10 remote viewers who are looking at that same dark room, and you throw, you know, in other words, the 10, 10 candles, and you throw them in there, you're gonna see a lot more of that room, a lot more detail. And you'll have all different perspectives on the same thing. So, um, so yes, absolutely. Everybody is different. Everybody's unique. And by the way, everybody can do this. It's just a, it's a, it's a skill and a talent that anybody can learn. Just like you learn to read or you learn to ride a bike. I mean, it's like, you know, everything takes work, obviously. But you know, so once you work at it, you just hone in, in your skills, and then you can use those skills in other areas of your life, and then you can hone those areas. So this is why I want to share with you about remote viewing, and I, you know. I'm happy to answer all your questions uh, regarding this as well. So, oh, and the last one is the body, which is earth. Uh, and that's, what is its form? What is its structure? How, how, what's it made out of? What's its substance? I mean, these are the questions that I, how I categorize in remote viewing. So body, mind, heart, and gut, water, earth, fire, and air. Um, and uh, and just I extrapolate from there and I get further and further detail so and this will improve accuracy and definition and your life will become more defined and more accurate and you'll you'll hopefully participate more within the world around you because you'll realize that it's what you give to the world is what you get out of the world so anyway I don't want to get uh, uh, too crazy on you I just want to kind of answer some of the really great questions that came through on the uh, confessions of a paid remote viewer leak project. And um, and thank you so much. Really appreciate you you watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, ways to improve, please let me know in the uh, comment section below. I'll try and answer everybody I possibly can. And I appreciate your interest in this. You guys have a you guys have a great day. Cheers.